Welcome to my latest case, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. To start, choose junior or senior detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorial. Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join forces with the Hardy boys. I just hope this doesn't turn out to be another one of Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people can be a little too rich and a little too famous for their own good. Wish me luck. Love, Nancy. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West? You are just awesome! And Tino Balducci. Only the most famous police detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives? My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective, their friend? Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because, see, one day in 1903, his train, this train, was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <laughs> She's gone. Oh my gosh. What in the world? What the? Hey, what's going on? People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minor celebrities. What was your name again? Nancy Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You don't remember me, do you? No. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? Psst, Nancy. Come here. Uh, excuse me for a second. Hey, Nance. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Did you talk to him? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you see what it was? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior. 
So just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American teens against crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. What'd Charlena have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? I kind of agree with Frank. You've got to be kidding. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Great. Catch you later. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Lori Gerard has disappeared. So? Did you know she was going to disappear? Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now, my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non-stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. But... Now, if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. A square and a duck. It looks like this thing opens up, but how? Looks like some sort of steam valve. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. It looks like there's something behind this painting, but I can't seem to move it. Is this Jake and his wife? Yes. From what I've read, Camille loved to sing and dance, even in death, apparently. Jake reportedly told people that after she died, he would sometimes see strange glowing lights outside the windows at night, bobbing gracefully alongside the train as if dancing with it. He said he found the sight very comforting. I suspect normal people would have found it terrifying. Looks like some kind of gemstone.
Left pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? This must have been the sleeping car. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <sighs> uh, guessing could take me a while. Hey, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. You look pretty busy. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Do you really think that a moving train can be haunted? Sure. A train is basically nothing but a living space on wheels. And just like a house or a hotel, its walls can capture and hold energy, however infinitesimal, whatever its source. You see, what to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions in local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. That's my working theory, at least. That's a little hard to swallow. It's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing, and I, for one, am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. You don't think Tino Balducci will be able to track her down? I doubt it. In fact, I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. What's your opinion of Charlena Purcell? Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. Is Lori a friend of yours? first time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course, like everyone else who reads the tabloids. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Maybe she doesn't have any friends. Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. I won't keep you any longer. Pleasure talking to you. A little book of samplers. This looks like some sort of game. in here. Don't do that, please! Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. You just about took out my eardrums. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, all right? Okay. It's locked. Thomasina O'Neill. Looks like Camille was teaching herself how to play the piano.
I wonder what's under here, and what the deal is with those weird-looking bolts. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's me. Hi, Bess. And me. Hey, George, what's up? What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. This is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's the one who insisted we call you, Nancy. Only because you're driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I couldn't care less what Laurie Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really. You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not. You should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, man? Our hostess has disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, the train went into a tunnel, everything went dark, and when the train came out of the tunnel, no Lori. She just disappeared. Publicity stunt. I'm not so sure. Oh, come on, you don't really think something's happened to her, do you? Remember the time she was allegedly kidnapped from her Vegas hotel room? Yeah, the guy across the hall just happened to have a camera and got it all on tape. It made the evening news in practically every city in the country. And then there was her daring escape the next morning. Only it turns out she faked the whole thing. Of course, she claims her ex-boyfriend faked it to get back at her. She thought she was really being kidnapped. Like anybody believes that. Sounds to me like somebody has been spending a lot of time reading the tabloids. George has. Very funny. So what else is going on? Before she disappeared, Lori told us that the purpose of this train trip is to find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died. And he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? My first order of business is to find out what happened to Lori. Hmm. So first Hurley's wife dies, then Hurley vanishes, then the engineer dies, then Lori vanishes. A pattern, maybe? Bess, do us all a favor and leave the detective work to Nancy, okay? Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Ew, creepy. Jake used to see strange lights at night bobbing alongside the train and thought it was Camille dancing. Super creepy. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. Which is hard when you're practically covered in paint. I better go. We'll be right here. Yeah, washing the paint out of our hair. Hey, Nancy, right? That's right, Nancy Drew. Amateur detective, huh? Never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? You mean become a police detective? No, I never have. It's a great job, you know. I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Tell me about them. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days? FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. I heard they stopped because you accidentally rear-ended them. You heard wrong. You see, Nancy, 
when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers, all have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? Because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. Do you think it had anything to do with Lori's disappearance? Nah. Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here, keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. THE Tino Balducci. Oh, thank you. What else can I do for you? So, what do you think happened to Lori? Well, she could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. So, you're gathering facts? Of course. It may not look it because that's my style. I'm a low-key kind of guy. But hey, don't worry. I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. Thanks for your help. Anything for a fellow detective. Wonder what Jake used this for. Another gemstone. Looks like an old fashioned cigar box. Why it's locked. And what does AG mean? JH. For Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. Eliza Sandberger. Another gemstone. An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. Wonder why it's got all those symbols on it like that. It's locked. Duck look very familiar. like to make this thing, whatever it is, I'm going to need a spyglass, a pickaxe, and a lamp. 
Citrine, amethyst, zircon. Those are all gemstones, I think. Silver. What do all those colors have to do with silver? a lamp. I need a spyglass. According to that diagram I found, those six gemstones are supposed to go in these six holders. But I have no idea which one goes where. Wonder what's supposed to go here. Looks like I need to enter eight letters into this thing. The question is, which eight letters? Hmm. the one to find me. No offense, uh, Nadine? Nancy. Nancy Drew. Well, as you can see, I wasn't really spirited away by ghosts or anything. That bookshelf in the dining car, you step on this thing in the floor in there, and it slides open. I practiced disappearing for weeks. Was anyone else in on the trick? Just the engineer, and all he did was keep his mouth shut. See, here's the deal. My dad wound up with this train when he bought out Noram Shipping. They'd been storing it in this old warehouse outside St. Louis for so long that everybody had just forgotten about it. Anyway, after like mass begging on my part, dad had the train restored to working condition and got me an engineer and track permits and all that other stuff until finally, here we are, on our way to find out what happened to Jake Hurley. Uh, I think you were going to explain why you kidnapped yourself. Oh, right. Well, see, I was one of the first people in like a hundred years to set foot on this train, okay? Everything was just the way it was when Jake disappeared. Except, I also found this. It's a letter that Jake wrote in 1901 to his niece back east. He was real paranoid about claim jumpers, which is why he never told anyone where his mine was. But he was also afraid something would happen to him and no one would ever know where it was. So he wrote this letter to his only living relative, Ruth Kensington. Here, take it. You want me to have it? Why? Because you found me! See, in that letter, Jake tells Ruth that everything she needs to figure out where his mine is, is on this train. He also warns her that his wife's spirit is on the train too, which kind of creeps me out. But the thing is, to find Jake's lost mine, we need the train. How do you know this Ruth person didn't find the mine decades ago? 
Mostly because I found that letter in the wastebasket. It was like she'd gotten so ticked off, trying to follow her nutty uncle's clues, that she finally said to heck with the whole thing. So you want me to try to figure out where the mine is? Uh-huh. As for the other people on board, if you want to show them that letter, go ahead. It's totally up to you. We're going to Copper Gorge because that's where Jake buried Camille, so I figured his mine might be somewhere around there too. But if you think we need to go somewhere else, you just let me know and I'll have the engineer take us there. How come you didn't try to find the mine yourself? Maybe I did. Or maybe I just thought letting other people try to find it would be a good excuse to throw a party. I like parties. How well do you know your guests? Well, I don't know you or those Harvey guys at all. Hardy. Frank and Joe Hardy. Whatever. I didn't know John Gray before this either, but I love his show. And I figured he'd jump at the chance to investigate an honest-to-goodness haunted train. And now that someone has finally found me, I can finally go meet him for real. What about Tino Balducci? I met Tino right after he got famous for solving those robberies. Inviting him here for this was a no-brainer. I mean, what an awesome detective. And those piercing eyes of his? You just know his mind's in there going 90 miles an hour. How well do you know Charlena Purcell? I just know her from her books, which are so good. In fact, I just started reading her latest one, The Moon Tells No Lies. See, what I'd really, really like to do is write romance novels. Everybody who knows me says I'd be really good at it. In fact, a while back, I sent Charlena some ideas, you know, just to see what she thought. And? She hated them. We'll talk some more later. Keep me posted! The 3rd of November, 1901, from somewhere in Colorado. Dear Ruth, I know that we've never met, but now that your father, my estranged brother, is gone, you are my only living relative. I am writing to you to tell you about my mind before I, too, depart this earth, and its location is lost forever. I cannot tell you outright where it is, lest this epistle fall into the wrong hands, but with the information which follows, and with my train, which shall be yours upon my death, I promise that you'll be able to find it. First, you will need a map. To obtain it, know that my travels have taken me all over this great country, to towns which can be difficult to find, to Calico, Silverado, and Central City, to Dodge City, Virginia City, and Tombstone. To locate the mine on the map, you'll need my projector. When it comes to placing the stones, you'll need to ask someone who holds a warm place in my heart. I have stored his name accordingly, but to retrieve his name, you'll have to give the dolls an order. This will require looking inside Camille's dancing shoes for the name of their maker and wearing the shoes as you perform her favorite step on the dance floor. As for my beloved Camille, she has four words for you. Words which, when translated into numbers and used in combination, will help power my projector. But alas, she's taken them with her to her grave. So go to Copper Gorge, Colorado and pay your respects and let some of her goodness rub off on you. I promised Camille that this train would always be her home. In return, she promised to never leave, and indeed she never has. People say I'm crazy, but I've seen her, and heard her, and feel her presence on the train even today, 20 years after her untimely death. So above all else, my dear niece, let nothing happen to my train. It holds wonderful things. Kindest regards, Jake Hurley. Locked, naturally. I wonder how you open it. I wonder how you're supposed to get this open. Looks like a dance floor, maybe? Darn, the name of the shoes is so faded I can't tell what it is. Hmm, maybe Bess and George can help me figure out who made them.
Hello? Hi, Bess. Hey, what's going on? The name of the company that made Jake's wife's dancing shoes is too faded to read. But to find Jake's mine, I need to know what it is. Hey, I know what you can do. Take a picture of him with your cell phone, then send it to us, and we'll check them out for you. But I thought you guys had to paint Bess's room. Boring. Besides, we're going to have to take a break soon because we're almost out of paint. Probably because Bess has gotten more on me than she has on the wall. Anyway, send us a picture of the shoes via cell phone as soon as you can. Actually, I already sent you a picture of the shoes. Well then, hey, we're on it. Oh, you guys are the greatest. I know. Need anything else? I get the definite feeling Lori Gerard has a thing for Tino Balducci. I saw him on TV once. He is very cute. Lori thinks he's the world's greatest detective. And you don't? I think he thinks he is. I think the only reason he's famous is because he looks good on camera. Well, I think you two are being way too hard on him. Just because he's good looking doesn't mean he can't also be smart. In fact, maybe Balducci tries to look incompetent on purpose. You know, to give the bad guys a false sense of security so it's easier to catch them. Ever think of that? No, Bess, I never did. Well, there you go. I better go. We'll be right here. This has something to do with that list of cities Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth. Guess I'm done. Strange. All that's left is a jumble of letters. That must be the projector Jake mentioned in his letter to Ruth.
Jake's mine must be somewhere on this map, but where? this to open that grate I saw in Camille's car. They're all done. Wilson Carbide and Acetylene Works. Always your friend, Thomas Wilson. Looks like a pattern for some kind of dance step. Maybe I'd better keep this. some kind of sewing sampler. I've seen some of those symbols before. Hmm, I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. That tool I saw in the caboose. I bet that's what you use to unscrew these bolts.
More pipes to connect. Here we go. What is that? Nancy, what's with the Cheshire Cat grin? You found Lori. Yep, she's holed up in the caboose, and as a reward for finding her, she let me have this. It's a letter from Jake to his niece in which he leaves clues telling her how to find his mine. Only the clues are extremely obtuse. You found Lori, you got the letter with all the clues. Guess you don't need us anymore. Oh, Joe, quit pouting. Want any help? Are you kidding? You bet I do. Now you're talking. It stands to reason that the only person other than Jake who had to have known the location of Jake's mine was the engineer on Jake's train. Very true. Not necessarily. Jake might not have told him the exact location. Maybe he just had him drop him off somewhere nearby. Well, still, we'd be way ahead of the game if we knew where that drop-off point was. If the engineer had any surviving relatives, we may be in luck. The guy died more than a hundred years ago. How are we supposed to find out his name? Maybe Charlena What's-Her-Face could tell us how to go about it. Good idea, Frank. I'll ask her. I found a diagram for some kind of contraption that Jake designed, but to operate it, you need his pickaxe and some kind of lamp or lantern, which it looks like he gave to somebody named Buell. Buell? Joe, show her! Show her what? That old picture we found! Uh, okay. We found this on the bookshelf. See? Buell's Supplies and Pawn Shop. That's gotta be the same Buell Jake gave his axe and lantern to. Yeah, a hundred years ago. And the guy was a pawnbroker, Frank. The stuff's probably long gone. Or maybe it's still somewhere in Copper Gorge. Well, that's where we're headed, so let's just hope for the best. Right. Talk to you later. Sounds good. Engineer? This better be Miss Gerard. Well, actually... Forget it. This must be how Lori disappeared. Sadie Crawford. Better not mess with that puppy. must have thrown the emergency brake. The question is, did somebody throw the brake or something? Oh, Joe, now you sound like Lori. Hey, I was the first one on the scene, and I saw no one. What did the engineer say? He said the train could have derailed. He reset the brake, muttered a few choice words, then headed back to the engine just as you and Lori showed up. Everybody was there except Charlena. I don't think she left her laptop the whole time. There's no way Lori could have thrown the brake. 
Unless she had someone else do it. The question is, why? What did she or anybody else stand to gain by stopping the train? Answer? Nothing. Which is why I think we should at least consider the possibility that something less human in nature may be at work here. Ah, Joe. I'm going to see if Balducci's done dusting for fingerprints. Catch you later. up I found Lori safe and sound in the caboose so I guess those vibes you got about her being in serious trouble were wrong strange my vibes are never wrong what's even stranger is I'm still getting them so maybe they're not about Lori maybe they're about you I'm confused are you a scientist or a psychic I happen to be both what's commonly referred to as psychic phenomena is all a matter of energy just because we don't know where that energy is generated or how to measure it, yet, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Trust me, either you or Lori is, or soon will be, in big trouble. No offense, but I don't believe you. Don't say I didn't warn you. So are you making any progress in here? Oh yeah, not only am I getting some real unusual EMRs, that's electromagnetic readings, but take a look at this. You've got something? I set up a camera and took some time-lapse photos. Sometimes I was in the room, sometimes I wasn't, but somewhere along the line, I managed to get a shot of Camille. Where? You don't mean that little blob, do you? Yep, that's Camille. Okay. You're skeptical. That's cool. Just remember, the key word when it comes to ghostly phenomena is energy. That blob is the result of Camille's residual life force, spirit, if you will reacting with the chemicals in the photographic paper. Couldn't it just be a flaw in the photographic paper? Okay, it could be that too, but it's not. Trust me. I saw a bunch of weird glowing lights outside the window of the sleeping car. Really? Actually, I'm not surprised. Charlena said Jake Hurley used to see them too, only he attributed them to his dead wife, Camille. They're probably some form of piezoelectricity. See, my guess is, Quartz crystals in the ground are being compressed as the train passes over them, and the resulting voltage, called piezoelectricity, is manifesting itself as glowing lights, probably because of some quirk in the train shape or in the composition of the metals used in its construction. It was custom-built, remember. So it's a natural phenomenon, not a ghostly one? Take it from me. Old Mother Nature was capable of some pretty scary stuff. Well, I'll catch you later. Goodbye. Well, it's the little lady detective. What do you need? I found Lori. She was hiding in the caboose. Oh, yeah? It turns out that slug wasn't so worthless after all. That slug? I mean, I knew that slug was a clue. That's why I gave it to you. I mean, I could have found Lori no sweat, but I thought, hey, why not give somebody else a shot? And you came through. Nice job. Thank you. But look, from now on, if you come across anything that may have something to do with Jake hurling his mind, let me know, okay? Just so I can, you know, give you advice, help you sort things out. After all, the opportunity to work side by side with a world-famous police detective doesn't come along every day, you know. Did you find any fingerprints on the emergency brake handle? None that were any help, thanks to Casey Jones up there. I told the old geezer not to touch anything, but he went and got his big, fat, oily paw prints all over the place. If we didn't need him to drive the train, I'd charge him with obstruction of justice. Did you do anything else besides look for fingerprints? Of course. As a matter of fact, I found this. Probably fell out of the perp's pocket while he was yanking on the handle. Looks like some kind of thermometer. Yeah, like the kind a certain ghost hunter uses on that bogus show of his. You think John Gray threw the break? But why would he do that? Because they're thinking about axing his show, that's why. I checked with his buddy of mine in L.A. Gray's got to come up with something real big real soon, or he's toast. 
and you can't get much bigger than a train with a spooky past that's prone to strange accidents, now can you? Have you confronted John with your suspicions? All in due time. I always like to get my ducks in a row before I make an arrest. You're going to arrest him? Hey, the train could have derailed. We're talking reckless endangerment, attempted assaults, maybe even attempted murder. John Gray wanted publicity. That's exactly what I'm gonna give him. Thanks for your help. Don't mention it. Guess Camille liked to collect dolls. Again, just checking to see whether you were able to find out the name of those dancing shoes yet. Your wish is our command, but hang on to your hat. The name is a real mouthful. The shoes were made by Chaussette Chateauillant, C-H-A-U-S-S-E-T-T-E-S, C-H-A-T-O-Y-A-N-T-E-S. That's French for shimmering socks. Apparently, if you were into dancing in the 1870s, that was the company to get your shoes from. Chaussette Chateauillant. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for letting us help. I discovered this cabinet full of old dolls in the caboose. Old dolls make my skin crawl. Whose were they? They belonged to Jake's wife, Camille. Jake mentioned them in his letter to his niece. They could have been Jake's, you know. I mean, they never had a child of their own, right? So maybe after Camille died, he went a little bonkers. Oh, Bess. Hey, I'm just trying to think outside the box here, okay? Something it wouldn't hurt you to do from time to time, little Miss No Imagination. You know, maybe I'll just put this paintbrush down, walk out that door, and let you do this all by yourself. No! You've got to keep painting. If I don't get this done by tomorrow, I'll be grounded for a month. I was just kidding about your imagination. It's wonderful. You're wonderful. Very, very wonderful. That's more like it. I better go. Let us know what happens.
Yes? What are you working on? I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. I found Lori. She's in the caboose. You were right. She disappeared because she wanted to see which of us would find her first. And you won. Congratulations. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Boulet, who died about a year after they were married. Where was he from? East Coast. Philadelphia, I think. His parents were British aristocrats. Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. So he went west and became a miner? All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated, and its location quite unknown. The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? Did you know that Lori wants to be a romance novelist? <sighs> Doesn't everyone. Do you think she could do it? No. Could we please talk about something a little more pleasant? Would you like to see the letter that Lori gave me as a reward for finding her? The one in which Jake Hurley supposedly tells his niece how to find his lost mine? No, thank you. I happily leave it to you to try to solve the mystery of his disappearance. You can afford to look foolish, dear. I can't. Do you have a theory as to who pulled the emergency brake? Well, I know it wasn't me. I assume it wasn't you, and I highly doubt it was Lori. So that leaves those two friends of yours, Mr. Gray and Mr. Balducci. What do you think their motive was? I don't know about your friends, but perhaps those other two simply thought it would be fun. Boys will be boys. Aren't you even going to try finding out what happened to Jake Hurley? No time. The only reason I haven't insisted that Lori release me from all this silliness is there's always the possibility that what happened to him has the makings of a bestseller. Although I highly doubt it. How would I go about finding out the name of Jake's train engineer? If you're smart, you'd ask me. And because my work is going surprisingly well, during my next break, I'll log on to my archives at home and see what I can turn up. That'd be great, thank you. Whoever invented the cellular modem, that's whom you should thank, dear. Why are you so sure that Jake's story wouldn't make a bestseller? His story is an all-too-common one. A man wanders off into the desert in search of gold and never returns. Why? He either doesn't have enough food or water, or he encounters hostile natives. What about his wife, Camille, dying on the train like that? That does make the story a little more interesting. She probably died of something mundane, like pneumonia or even measles. Now, if it was wintertime when she died, and they were in the mountains, Jake no doubt kept her body on the train for months before he buried her, which is rather delicious in a morbid sort of way. How do you think Jake's engineer wound up dead on the train in the middle of nowhere? My guess is the engineer got tired of waiting for Jake to return, took off in the train to get help, and died of a heart attack along the way. After which, the train rolled to a stop in Blue Moon Canyon. Anyone experienced enough to single-handedly run a steam engine would have been quite a bit older than Jake. I should get going. Let me know if you run across anything juicy. Nancy, you missed it. Missed what? The argument of the century. Joe... He's exaggerating. Oh, come on. You heard him. They were ready to tear each other to shreds. Who? 
Charlena and Lori. All we heard was the tail end of it, and unfortunately, we really couldn't make out what they were saying. So you don't know what they were arguing about? No. But whatever it was, both of them were absolutely out of their minds, livid. And it would probably be a good idea to find out why. Let me look into it. I'll talk to you later, okay? You know where to find us. More questions? What were you and Lori arguing about earlier today? Lori and I? We weren't arguing. We were simply discussing a topic about which both of us are passionate, that's all. Were you discussing her wanting to be a romance novelist? No. And even if we were, that's really none of your business. I know that sounds harsh, but really, Nancy, eavesdropping is so tacky. Actually, it was Frank and Joe Hardy who overheard you. They said I should talk to you before they gave me all the gory details, but since you obviously don't want to tell me your side of the story, I'll just have to get the scoop from them. No, no, you don't have to do that. A storyline that Lori submitted to me found its way into my last book, despite the fact that she never received compensation for it. She's reading the book now, and when she got to that part, she freaked. You stole one of her ideas? She had no business sending me unsolicited material. But, technically, yes. Now, legally, she can't prove anything, and I'm certainly not about to admit anything. And it's not as if she needs the money. But that's what we were arguing about. For what it's worth, I'm going to talk to this producer I know to see if he'll cast Lori in his next movie. It'll help ease my conscience, and who knows? She could wind up being a star. I mean, she is blonde. I'll touch bases with you later. That would be nice. It's locked. Hey, glad you stopped in. You gotta listen to this. What have you got? I put this digital recorder in the corner where Camille showed up in that picture and turned it on so it would just keep recording. Now when you play it back at normal volume, all you hear is background noise. But when you turn the volume way up and run the signal through a filter or two, Hear that? I hear something. It kind of sounds like a woman singing. Not just any woman. Camille. Camille. So be careful what you say in here. She's listening. Are you by any chance missing a small digital thermometer? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am. When I went through the box I'd packed them in, that one over there, I came up one short. I was hoping to set up at least six in here so I could check for cold spots. How did you know I was missing one? Because Tino Balducci found it by the emergency brake handle when he was dusting it for fingerprints. And now he thinks you're the one who pulled it. That's ridiculous. I didn't have any reason to pull the emergency brake. Have you been in this room the whole time you've been on the train? Of course not. I made a couple of trips to my compartment in the sleeping car to get more equipment. But did I get an overpowering urge to pull the emergency brake while I was there? No. Any truth to the rumor that your show's about to be canceled? Newsflash. My show was canceled. Happened last night. But what nobody knows yet is that it's been picked up by a major TV network. Not only am I still on the air, but I'm sitting prettier than ever. Any other questions? Thanks for the chat. Come back anytime. Sickly Sarah caught a germ so new, it made one of her pretty green eyes turn blue.
That looks just like the stuff John Gray has his thermometers packed in. Glad you dropped in. Lori told me she'd given you a letter from Jake Hurley that says how to find his mine. That's right. You can read it if you want. Lori should have given that to me. I mean, I'm the trained professional around here. Let me take a look. I've seen enough. Two words. Use less. Those are just the rantings of a guy who spent way too much of his life swirling mud around in pans under the hot sun. Five-star nut job. Lori says she found this letter in a wastebasket. Exactly where it belongs. How did you and Lori meet? We met at a party in New York. Nice girl. Not a lot of stairs, but nice girl. Did you two go out? Nope, no, never, never went out. Uh-uh, no. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Thanks for your help. Not a problem.
Yes? I hear that Tino and you used to be an item. How did you know that? So it's true? We went out a couple of times, yeah. As for why we stopped going out, you'd have to ask him. Do you have any idea who threw the emergency break? I know exactly who did it. You do? Well, who else could it be? Camille. None of us has any reason to stop the train, but Camille? She doesn't want us to find Jake's mine, so she's going to do whatever she can to keep its location a secret. She is dead, you know. Well, duh. That's why I know it's her. What's more, your friend that Jim Harley guy? Not Jim, Joe. Joe Hardy. Yeah, well, he thinks it's Camille, too. He just doesn't have the guts to say so. Bye. As soon as you figure it out, let me know. Hey, how's it going? Balducci wants me to share everything I find out about Jake Hurley with him. I'll bet he does. He just doesn't want you to show him up again. Yeah, he wants you to do all the legwork so at the last minute, BAM! He can swoop in and grab all the credit. I wouldn't tell him a thing, Nance. Unless it's to get lost. Tino found one of John Gray's thermometers by the emergency brake handle and is getting ready to throw the book at him. John Gray threw the emergency brake? Why would he do that? Tino thinks it's because John's TV show is in danger of being cancelled. But when I asked John, he told me his show was just picked up by a broadcast network. I still say there's less to all this than meets the eye, if you get my drift. I get your drift, Joe. I have lived with your drift for years. I am saddled with your drift. All right, all right. See you soon. Haven't done that yet. Can't check that off. I'm done with that. Up. I'll let you get back to work. Goodbye. Carbide. Just what I need to make that lamp I found work. That could be one of the gems I need. 
Maybe Tino will let me take a closer look. What's going on? Have you talked to John Gray? <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I'd talk to him would be to arrest him for fraud. Do you think I could take a closer look at that cougar statue? What, that cigar clipper? Uh, go ahead, Let's take a look. I'll bet I need this stone to build that thing in the diagram I found. But if I remove it now, Tina will know I'm onto something. Interesting. I just wanted to get a good look at it, that's all. What else can I do for you? You're the one who pulled that emergency brake, aren't you? <laughs> Me? <laughs> what are you, joking? Care to explain how packing material from the box those thermometers were in wound up on the floor over there? You're just some teenage nobody. I don't have to listen to this. You're right, you don't. Neither do the other passengers. But unless you give me a good reason not to, I think I'll tell them anyway. Look, maybe I was a little hasty, pointing a finger at the ghost guy like that. Maybe all those lies people have been spreading are starting to get to me. Maybe I thought it would help if I got a little positive press by solving a crime aboard a haunted train. Maybe I apologize. And, uh, maybe you can see fit not to let any of this go beyond this room? Well, no harm done, I guess. Great. Well, what else can I do for you? How come you told me you and Lori never went out, and she told me you did? Don't you ever stop asking questions? I'm a detective. You know how it is. <sighs> My dumpster, okay? I'm not proud of what I did. I'm not happy about what I did. But it's done. It's over. Now let's drop it. Guess I'll just have to go talk to Lori again. You are incredibly irritating, you know that? I dumped her because... Because people said going out with her would make me look bad. Said she was a joke. That no one took her seriously. Said if I started hanging with her, no one would take me seriously. So I stopped calling. But you didn't stop caring. No. Now take a powder. I don't feel like talking anymore. With any luck, I just opened the stove in the dining car. Hey, how's it going? I think I know the name of Jake Hurley's engineer. James Thurston. Great! What else do you know about him? Well, nothing. Good. Good? Yeah, finding out more about him will give us something to do. We'll look into it. See you soon. If you need anything, just let us know. I'm done with- Can't check that off yet. Finish that. Finish that. Check.
It's locked. Teddy Eberhardt. I'm done with that. Finish, finish that. Check, finish that. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. Check. Ah, I can't stay mad at a fellow detective. What do you need? What do you think happened to Jake Hurley? He probably died trying to work that mine of his all by himself. But I'll let you in on a secret. I'm onto something that could crack this case wide open. You know where the mine is? Sorry, can't go into detail. Let's just say that thanks to yours truly, what happened to Jake Hurley won't be a mystery much longer. It's been great talking to you. Anything for a fellow detective. How's it going? Were you able to find anything out about Jake's engineer, that James Thurston guy? Good news and bad news. The good news is he had a wife in Copper Gorge, so he may have had children. The bad news is our internet service provider stopped providing before we could use our cell phones to find out anything else. That's okay. We can do more checking when we get to Copper Gorge. Right. here. Welcome, stranger. Listen, you by any chance get here on that private train what's parked out yonder? As a matter of fact, yes, I did. There's a rumor going around that Charlena Purcell's on board. Is that true? As a matter of fact, yes, it is. Hot dang if that don't beat all. I've read every single book that gal's ever written. Best writer would ever lived. Did she get off the train, too? I don't think so. She's pretty busy. Charlena Purcell herself right here in Copper Gorge. Breathing the same air as me. Hot dang! Well, welcome, little missy. Go on in and take a gander at what life was like during the heyday of Copper Gorge whilst you sample some of our delicious homemade saltwater taffy. Sample? As in free sample? Some taffy on a stick will cost you two tokens, which you can get by winning both those games over there. How much does it cost to play them? Well, ain't you the little penny pincher. Fact of the matter is they're free. Lest you go messing with the artifacts I got in here. Do that and you'll be headfirst in the nearest snowdrift before you know what hit you. Are you Buell? Do I sound like a Buell to you? Sorry, the costume kind of, you know, threw me off. Oh, right. <laughs> Sometimes I forget I'm wearing this thing. Buell was my great-great-uncle. This building used to be his general store. During the glory days back in the 1880s, he commenced a pawnbroker, so the miners Copper Gorge was crawling with back then could raise some cash to pay for grub and tools and such. But pretty soon, the mining boom went bust, and there was Uncle Butte, stuck with a whole store full of junk. Only it wasn't junk to him. Debris from lost lives and broken dreams, what he called it. Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. So, passed it on to his kin. My great-granddaddy's the one who come up with the idea of turning the place into a tourist attraction. Pleasure talking to you. I'll bet it was.
This looks just like the insignia I saw on the train. I'll bet this was Jake's trunk. If this was his trunk, maybe the pickaxe and lamp that I need are inside. You still here? Do you know what's in that old trunk over there? Why? You ain't been fooling with it, have you? Oh, no. Of course not. It's just that I think it might contain a lamp and pickaxe that used to belong to a miner named Jake Hurley. Well, if it does, you can forget about him, because it's locked. None of my kin have ever been able to figure out how to open it. Not even my cousin Alvin, and he went to junior college. So it's never been opened? Not since whoever owned it left it here. I'd really like to see what's inside it. Well, now, I certainly ain't gonna let you break it open if that's what you're getting at. Oh, no, I would never use force, believe me. But in order to try to get it open, I would have to, you know, touch it. Nope, sorry, not gonna happen, little missy. Unless... Unless? Tell you what, you get Charlene and Purcell to come in here so as I can shake her hand, and I'll let you fiddle with that trunk till the cows come home. You know what? I've got a better idea. Now, what could be better than me coming face to face with the lady who writes the finest literature this here country's ever seen? Well, that's just it. If you were to just meet her, you'd have nothing to show for it. Afterwards, she'd go her way and you go yours, and that would be it. But if you were to, say, get her autograph, well, then you'd have something to hang on the wall and brag about. Okay. Make it so I can meet her and get her autograph. Oh, but the thing is, she's on a deadline, and if you take her away from her writing, she may fall behind. And if she falls behind, her publisher may pull the plug. And if her publisher pulls the plug, it could ruin her career. Do you really want to risk ruining Charlena Purcell's career? Good heavens, of course not. All right, you just get me Charlena's autograph, and you got a deal. Just make sure she uses my name. I want it real personal like. You bet. And your name is? Fatima, with an F. None of that weirdo pH stuff. Okay, Fatima, I'll be right back. Something tells me I better not go in there without permission. Questions? I met a huge fan of yours in town who'd really, really like your autograph. An autographed picture would be even better. Imagine that. Me having fans way out here in the boonies. Well, I'm sure I have a picture around here somewhere. But what I don't have is a pen. Usually I just ask my assistant for one. I have a pencil here somewhere. A pencil won't do, dear. It has to be ink. See if you can borrow a pen from somebody. What's going on? Do you by any chance have a pen I could borrow? Why, I'm surprised at you. Don't you know that every detective should carry a pen? Actually, I carry a pencil. Well, as it happens, I got lots of pens. I'll tell you what, if you can play that Leapin' Lizards game I found over there and do better than I did when I played it, which shouldn't be that hard seeing as how smart you are, I'll give you a pen. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Okay. The object of the game is to get rid of as many lizards as you can by jumping them with other lizards until you can't jump anymore. Last time I played, I wound up with just five lizards. If you can wind up with only four, the pen's yours.
I did it! I won! Talk about luck. Here's your pin. What else can I do for you? You've been a big help. Not a problem. Have you found a pen so I can autograph that picture? I got it from Tino. You can keep it. If you could have it say, To Fatima, that'd be great. There you go. Anything else? Well, I'll let you go. All right, then. There you are. We've been looking for you. Yeah, you won't believe the lucky break we caught. Lucky break? Hey, that was the result of good old-fashioned detective work. It was the result of your insisting we stop for a cheeseburger. Guys, what's going on? Well, it turns out that a grandchild of Jake's engineer still lives around here. What's more, he hangs out at the local diner, comes in every day. Apparently, he's pretty ancient. Ah, and you found that out when you stopped there so Joe could get a hamburger. Cheeseburger. The thing is, the owner of the diner wouldn't agree to point the guy out unless one of us fills in for a short-order cook. He's got to go home and wait for the cable guy or something. And since Joe here barely knows how to boil water, guess who got the job? Way to go, Frank. Oh, and get this. Balducci convinced Lori that Jake's mine is somewhere right here in Copper Gorge, so he, Lori, and John Gray are hiking up the mountain out there even as we speak. Like that bumblebrain's gonna find anything. Sounds like now might be a good time to do some serious poking around on the train. Good thought. Hey, I better get going. Wish me luck. I'll go with you. You can make me a cheeseburger. Got that autograph? Got something better. An autographed picture. Hot dang! She spelled my name right and everything. Go ahead, little missy. Have a go with that trunk. Whatever's inside it's all yours. Hmm, this indentation looks familiar. Something fits in here. Here we go. Yes? <gasps> you startled me. Do you work here? I do. Are you looking for someone? Uh, yes. Camille Hurley. She died back in the 1800s. Ah, Camille. Beautiful crypt. Wonderful view, good drainage. Whoever buried her must have loved her very much. May I go inside it? You may, but unfortunately you can't. Why not? I accidentally dropped the key down the grate that's in front of the crypt. If you can retrieve it, you can keep it. I'm having another one made. But if you do go into the crypt, just remember, you won't be alone. Well, there's the key. I need something long and sticky. Welcome back. It was fun talking to you. I'll bet it was. Tappy on a stick. 
Hey, maybe I could use this to fish the crypt key out from under that grate. You still here? It was fun talking to you. Be right here if you got any questions. Fooey. Looks like to get some taffy on a stick, I'm going to need two different tokens. Can't get anything without a token. This indentation looks familiar. C-U P-B
In the letter he wrote to his niece, Jake said she should go to Camille's grave and let Camille's goodness rub off on her. Rub as in rubbing, maybe? If I am supposed to make rubbings of these pillars, I'll need a pencil, which I already have, and some nice thin paper. Well, here's Jake's lamp. Another slug. Could come in handy. But where's his pickaxe? Welcome back. Have you by any chance ever come across a pickaxe that had the initials J.H. carved into it? Why? Because it used to belong to Jake Hurley, and I really, really need it. I thought it would be in that old trunk, but it wasn't. You got that trunk open? Wait till I tell Cousin Alvin. He thinks he's so smart. As for that pickaxe, so happens I got it upstairs in my kitchen. Use it to open the coconuts Aunt Lucy sends me every year from Hawaii. Do you think I could have it? Why, no, you can't have it. How would I open them coconuts? Hey, I could have just gotten you Charlena's autograph, but instead I got you an autographed picture, which is way better. You owe me. Oh, okay. I'll let you have the pickaxe. After you do something for me. Sure. I got a bunch of taffy over there what needs sorting. Just follow the directions that are posted by the machine. Them belts get moving pretty fast, so you gotta keep your wits about you. While you're doing that, I'll fetch that pickaxe. You got a deal. Wax paper for the taffy. Would you mind if I took a piece of wax paper? Guess I could let you have a piece. Indeedy. Got that taffy sorted? No problem. That was easy. You sneak any freebies while you were at it? Oh no, I would never do that. <laughs> well, ain't you the goody two-shoes? Truth is, wouldn't have minded too much if you had. Long as you fessed up to it. Here's the pickaxe. Cracked the handle pretty bad on the last batch of coconuts. You sure you want it? Positive. There you go. Don't hurt yourself. I won't. Thank you. Hello? Hey, it's Frank. I'm in the kitchen of the diner playing short order cook. Has that grandchild of Jake's engineer showed up yet? Just came in with this lady who's even older than he is. And get this. He's a retired miner, so every time I finish an order and ring the pickup bell, he thinks it's the mine shaft elevator bell. And for some reason, it makes him start telling his lady friend about his grandfather. You mean you ring the bell and he starts talking about James Thurston? Exactly. Of course, five seconds later, he's rambling on about something totally unrelated, but I just fill an order, ring the bell, and ding, he picks up right where he left off. That is, unless I fill the order wrong and the waitress chews me out. She's got a voice like a chainsaw. Very distracting. Sounds 
Sounds like you better keep your ears open and your nose to the grindstone. I am. Just wanted to keep you posted. Well, good luck. Thanks. Talk to you soon. What you want to order yet, Edna? I'm still looking. Did I tell you that my granddad was the engineer on a private train owned by one of the richest men that ever passed through Copper Gorge? Jake Hurley was his name. Yes, sir, my granddaddy was Jake's private engineer for more than 25 years. Told my daddy that men don't come any crazier than Jake Hurley, or any nicer. Treated my granddaddy real well and told him stuff. Real important stuff. Stuff he made my granddaddy swear to never, ever forget. Stuff that my granddaddy told my daddy, and that my daddy told me. Why don't you get the egg salad, Edna? Eggs are back to being good for you, you know. Seems like, yes, sir, Jake Hurley told my granddaddy things he never told another living soul. Not even his wife. I tell you about her, Edna. I don't think so. Camille was her name. Camille Boulet. That's French, you know. Of course, she died so young that poor Jake didn't have time to tell her anything. According to my granddaddy, one summer day she had a dizzy spell and fell and hit her head. She didn't take well to the heat, see? And sometimes in the summer, when they were going through the desert, why, that train would be just like an oven. Anyway, granddad said she got right up afterwards and seemed okay. But a couple hours later, Jake found her in her room, dead as a doormat. Now, there's another... The way my granddaddy died, that was kind of strange, too. I ever tell you how my granddaddy died? No, I don't think you did. My daddy, he came home from school one day to find a railroad official telling his mom that granddad been found dead in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada. He was in the engine of Jake Hurley's train, just kind of slumped over with his hand still on the throttle. The strange thing is, nobody else was on board the train, yet the door to the engine was locked and barred. It was like granddad was trying to keep someone out, like he was running from something. Like something finally scared him so bad, his heart just stopped. Of course, he was in his 60s at the time, and back then, that was old. <laughs> Doesn't seem so old now, does it, Edna? Here I am, pushing 93, and still spry as a spring chicken. Spring chicken! Now, where do you suppose that expression came from? Why not spring goose or summer chicken? Ah, life's just one puzzlement after another, isn't it, Edna? I ever tell you about the mine my granddaddy said Jake Hurley'd found? He found a mine? A couple years before he died, granddad told my daddy, but the craziest thing Jake Hurley ever did was tell granddad the secret to finding his mine. He made him swear to tell it to my daddy and nobody else. Eventually, my daddy, he told me, and it was so bizarre that I remember it to this day, though I sure don't understand how it had helped anybody find his mine. But since my daddy didn't tell me not to tell anybody, this is what crazy Jake Hurley told Granddad, word for word. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. The eye of the tiger is fixed on a star. Zircon lies in fingers that scar. Amethyst floats in a hand from the deep. Citrine is what the foul mouth shall keep. Tourmaline by a soft arm is ensnared. Peridot rests at the foot of the mare. Frank, are you sure that's what he said? I'm positive. Are you sure that's all he said? Look, this guy was old, okay? I mean, we're talking Jurassic. And guys that old don't joke around. They don't have time to. 
What you just heard is what I heard, word for word. Got anything else? I almost forgot. You gotta check this out. It's just an old letter, Frank. You bet it's an old letter. From Samuel Clemens. Oh my gosh, where'd you get this? I found it in the caboose. Apparently he and Jake were pen pals. Wish I had a famous writer for a pen pal. When Joe gave it to me, I about flipped. I know I should turn it over to Lori, and I will, but it's just so darn cool. I still don't see what the big deal is. I mean, it's not like it's from Mark Twain or anything. What? See you soon. You better. Wisdom, charity, purity, eternity. An eagle. Where else have I seen an eagle? More pipes. Why am I not surprised? There, that looks right.
is some duct tape. I need to fix the handle. up i hear tino took you and lori for a little hike today don't remind me turns out tino had no idea where he was going good thing for him my fingers were frozen stiff otherwise i would have strangled him would you by any chance have any duct tape got some right there in my gearbox that's the good news the bad news is i can't open the box it's an antique lock box that i found in this abandoned monastery i scoped out on my show last year you can open it with either the key, which I just discovered I forgot to bring with me, or the combination, which you're supposed to be able to figure out just by looking at the box. Fortunately, I didn't put anything critical in there. I've never tried to open it without the key, but if you want that duct tape, go ahead and give it a shot. Thanks, I think I will. If you get it open, the duct tape's all yours. There's an image on each of those buttons. They tell a story, maybe? I bet the animals should start from the left shore. There, good as new. Well, sorta. Nothing happened. Hmm, this contraption is obviously powered by something, but what?
And naturally, we have still more pipes. That should do it. Sounds like steam from the engine is moving through those pipes now. something. Jake said a lamp goes here. Okay, looks like that goes there. I need a spyglass. Before you say anything, I just want to say thank you. For what? Tino came to see me. He said you'd made him realize what a jerk he'd been for dumping me, and then he asked me out. Isn't that great? He said he doesn't care what anybody else thinks. He thinks we make the perfect couple. Well, I can't argue with him there. So what do you want? I hear Tino took you and John on a trek to Jake's mine. Jake's mine my eye. We went tramping through the snow, lugging all this equipment John insisted on bringing, and where do we end up? At this teeny tiny, half-rotten, tumbled-down outhouse. He led you to an outhouse? Well, he said it was the opening to a mine shaft, but then John said if it was, shouldn't the hole be going into the mountain instead of just down? So they stood there arguing until Tino finally grabbed a shovel, went inside, and started digging. What he found was definitely not gold. Did he apologize? Of course not. If he didn't have such nice eyes, the man would be a total zero. Bye. Keep me posted. What's up? I'll let you get back to work. Goodbye. I moved my microphones, so if you want to play the piano, knock yourself out. Thank you.
If I had some music, I could play a tune. If I had some music, I could play a tune. Need some music. A spyglass. I'll bet it's the one I need for Jake's projector. There, it should work now.
Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place. Nothing happened. The jewels must not be in the right place.
This is where a gemstone goes. Whoa, looks like I did something right. And we have with them. Jake's mine is Brimstone Canyon. Don't you look all excited? What's up? I think I know where Jake's mine is. Tell the engineer to head for a place in Nevada called Brimstone Canyon. Way to go! I knew you could do it, Francie. Not Francie, Nancy. Here's the deal. When we get there, I'm going to make sure that you get to be the first one to check out the mine. I'll call everyone together in the dining car, and while we're in there, you slip off the train. Will ten minutes be enough of a head start? That'd be great. Think of it as your reward. Of course, anything you find in the mine is, well, mine. So if I find out that you've taken something without telling me, let's just say things could get ugly. I wouldn't get your hopes up too high. The mine might be totally worthless, you know. I know, but I have the feeling that thanks to you, we are about to discover something huge. Great job, Amy. Uh, thank you. Like the train's leaving. Where's it going? Well, Frank and Joe will make sure it comes back for me. I hope. Right, this is the entrance to Jake's mine. Whoa, what's going on here? Jake's color wheel seems to be pointing toward purple. Wow, glowing lizards, cool, but weird. Thank you. 
wonder what that's doing there. Uh-oh, there's some kind of chamber on the other side of those poles. But if I move the wrong one, the ceiling will collapse. Jake was too meticulous not to have left a clue somewhere as to how you're supposed to move them. I wonder if it has something to do with that symbol I saw before. I've seen that symbol before. And next. I think I made a boo-boo. Okay, so far so good. I should be able to get through there now. Jake Hurley, I presume? Camille. It figures he'd be carrying a picture of her. Hmm, there's something underneath it. Looks like a letter. April 14th, 1865. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your humble friend, Abe. Oh my gosh, this is from Abraham Lincoln. And April 14th is the day he was assassinated. This letter must be worth a fortune. That's just what I thought too. See, what I didn't tell you when I gave you that letter Jake wrote to Ruth is that I also found his diary, which is how I found out he'd gotten to be friends with President Lincoln, and that he'd gotten a letter from Abe that he knew would be so valuable someday that he always kept it on his person. Can I have it? Sure. See, I knew if we could just find Jake's body, we'd find the letter. And you did it, Amy. You did it. I'm going to be famous. Good famous for once. So you never really cared about finding Jake's mine? Nah. I mean, it would have been nice if it was filled with gold and silver and stuff. But this is what I was really after. And you followed me because you didn't trust me? I trusted you to find it. I just didn't trust you to give it to me. And now that you have, you know, I'd really, really be famous if I could say I found this all by myself. But even if I got you to lie for me, how do I know you'd keep lying? Oh my gosh! What if there was like this cave-in and we were trapped, but I was the only one who made it out? Uh, excuse me? Oh my gosh! That way I could not only say that I found the letter, but that I tried to save you. Only you did something stupid, and it was all I could do to save myself. Oh my gosh! I'd make the national news for sure, and people would say I was smart and resourceful and courageous even. Lori, you can't be serious. That's crazy. You don't understand. People are finally going to respect me. I have to do this. Sorry. Sorry! The opening's blocked. I'm trapped. It'll take forever to dig through those rocks. There's got to be another way out of here. Maybe I could get out of here in this.
Sorry, are you all right? Nancy! Is everything okay? It is now. As soon as we discovered you and Lori weren't on the train, we jumped off and hightailed it back here. What the heck's going on? I'm sure Lori will be glad to tell you all about it. Darn you, Natalie! It's Nancy. Dear Hannah, some hostess Lori Gerard turned out to be. When her father heard that she'd tried to seal me up in that mine, he canceled all her credit cards and said that from now on, Lori will have to support herself. She has yet to stop crying. Tino Balducci told reporters that he knew what Lori was up to all along and said he let Frank, Joe, and me solve the case so we amateurs could enjoy his limelight. Joe was just about to belt him when a big argument broke out between John Gray and Charlena over whether John had really recorded Camille's ghost. She started calling him a crackpot, and then he started calling her a hack. Then, well, let's just say that soon the press was no longer interested in what Tino had to say. As for Jake Hurley, it turns out that his letter from Abe Lincoln is worth a small fortune. Pretty ironic, huh? Jake spent his whole life searching for gold, when all along he possessed something far more valuable. His uncanny knack for making friends. Love, Nancy. Have you ever been to Paris, France? Well, préparez-vous, because that's where my next mystery adventure takes place. I'm going to be the assistant to Minette, a famous fashion designer. I'll be working undercover to find out why she's been acting so peculiar lately, throwing tantrums, firing people. She's even started wearing a mask for no apparent reason. Her studio is in this spooky-looking, centuries-old Moulin. That's French for windmill. Of course, that doesn't have anything to do with her strange behavior. Or does it? Only one way to find out. Help me solve my next case. Danger by design. A la prochaine.